Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to the Virtue of Consistency and Building Habits Faster Lecture. So, uh, as I said, this talk will be life-changing and uh, I think you will enjoy it very much. So, how much information is this worth? So, there are three levels the way I see it. The first level is just you watching this and, you know, passively uh, enjoying the thing. That will be worth, it will be worth quite a lot, but um, not that much. On the other hand, if you actually try to look how this applies to your life, I can guarantee that you will start progressing at stuff much faster. And if you actually listen, realize what I'm talking about and take action, whoa, man, like <laughs> this is going to be epic for you. So try and look not only how can you use this, uh, how does this apply to you, but also how can you run with it and start changing your life today. So throughout the lecture, you will have some chances to maybe either put your input or try to maybe think how can this apply to you. So I will give everybody time to do that. Okay, so about myself. So I started uh, on what's called the failure path. I was perfectionist. Uh, I could not basically do anything uh, without being black and white. Like if I wanted to work out, it had to be like either two hours a day or I won't be doing it. It has to be, um, if it's uh, girls, for example, so I won't allow myself to just like approach a girl and have a nice time. It has to be like approach like a hundred girls uh, daily and uh, everything was very extreme about me. So I would always start things and not finish and be very disappointed. So I had no girls. I was bipolar which means uh, I had really horrible mood swings and I had no money. So basically I was super ambitious. I constantly tried things, but nothing worked out. So that was very, very, it was a horrible time in my life, like about four years of that. And then um, at my worst time, like at the time where I honestly considered suicide, I contacted a guy from the United States, a coach named Steve. And what Steve taught me is balance. So that was quite a hard thing for me to learn as, you know, being such a perfectionist, learning balance is probably one of the hardest things I've done because when you're a perfectionist, like probably most of the people, you just want to, to, to be extreme about everything. It's like a, this lazy excuse, like 90% of the people don't work out, but they don't work out. Uh, they could work out like five minutes every day and they would be healthy. They would not have health problems, but they choose not to work out because it's expensive to get to the gym and they don't have time. And this basically applies to any area of your life, whether it be eating healthy, getting into relationships, making money. So um, once I started working with Steve, he helped me build good habits. So it was this weird science, like, like, I could not understand what Steve wanted for me. This was so weird to me. He was like, okay, Robbie, so your action plan for this week would be eating one apple a day and going to sleep one hour earlier. And I was like, oh my God, like who the fuck is this guy? What, what? Like, like I'm an action person. I want, I want to like, like go all the way. But he said, look, Robbie, so you took me because you're in a really bad position and I'm here to help you. So just trust me, give me like a month. And if this doesn't work, I'll give you your money back. Yeah, and I can, Robbie, I can relate to that as well. You know, there were some clients from my early coaching program that I had, you know, where I taught people how to make $10,000 a month, work as well as four hours a month. And sometimes, you know, these people, we, we were going to jump ahead, but I would be like, no, 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 no. You, till now, all you did was, you know, you just started new things and you struggled to finish all these things. So for you, maybe you need to do less, but you need to do it more consistently. And you know, uh, you talk about the failure path and success path. Uh, <laughs> um, I, can, I can relate to that so much. I'll, although I was, you know, I was just starting out. When I was on the failure path, I guess I was 13. I started my first business. It took me one year, one year to get to a point where I was making $1,000 a month. 
So at 14, I was making $1,000 a month. And then very quickly, you know, um, started making a lot more. But yeah, I can relate to that so much. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, people don't realize it, but the difference between the failure path and the success path, it's so simple. It's just small victories over time. So that could be as simple as, a, as an obese guy that wants to lose weight. And all he does, because of he has no willpower, all he needs to do is just eat one apple a day. And once he does that for like a week, he has built enough willpower to go on to the next goal. Uh, but we'll talk about it later. So um, this, uh, basically this, uh, you could say the Bible of habit building and actually treating everything with consistency has uh, changed my life completely. And I attribute pretty much all of my success up to this point and all my success in the future to this ability. Without it, I would not even even start it. I would have been a motivated guy who was um, dumbed down by life, you know, like pathetic, trying things, failing, trying things, failing, you know, depressed, angry. So, so yeah, it's all about habit building and consistency, and we'll get to that in a moment. So, what we're going to talk about. First thing we're going to talk about is success and the processes that cause it. So we're going to talk about um, how success is created and um, what are the hidden mechanisms behind it. So most people look at Matt and me sometimes and they go like, okay, so that probably, he made like a jump. So Matt is like either, was either born successful or he did this one thing and he started making a lot of money. That's the way we perceive it, and it's completely wrong. Secondly, we'll talk about the difference between success and failure. So these are the small choices that we make every day that make all the difference. So people who are extremely successful, I'm talking about Donald Trump successful, they usually do, they're, they're only human, and the only difference between them and you is the choices they make. So we will get into that later. Then I will talk to you about the power of habit and how to actually apply conscious habit building. This is the key to growth and success. If you don't know how to do this, you will not be successful. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I think that's where you will talk about your faster, uh, um, how, how do you call it? Yeah, the faster system to building habits. Yeah, and that's faster is an acronym, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is, by the way, my best knowledge. Uh, the faster is probably the knowledge that's been in my mind for the longest time, been tested on hundreds of clients, and I can tell you that people's lives transform. Like, in a month, their lives are upside down, um, and they never believe it. So I'm like, I ask them to do the same small things. My coach asked me, and they never believe their life will change so much using these small steps. And they asked me like, hey, Robbie, like, uh, what about the part where we talk about my psychology? I'm like, doesn't matter. What about the part where we talk about my goals? Doesn't matter. I'm like, just build that skill, that skill of um, consciously building habits and being aware of yourself, and you'll have all the success you'll ever want. It's just a matter of time. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing we're going to talk about is how to implement this knowledge and how do you actually use it in your own life um, more uh, practically? So, first of all, success and the processes that cause it. Okay, so the hierarchy of success and growth. This is a mental model that I've built. Whenever I want to succeed at something, I look at it because it reminds me of what's truly important. So, it could start from the outside in and it could start from the inside out. So when I want to look at myself and ask, how well am I doing as a person? I look at it from the outside. But when I want to succeed in anything in life, like in the future, I'm asking from the inside out, how well am I doing these things? So uh, let's start outside. So who am I? The Lollapalooza effect. Basically, you take the three inner circles and you multiply them and based on how well you are doing them that's how well you'll do in life in general 
So when you look at a person, you can measure their success. You can already know how successful they are based on just these three things. Okay, so first of all, the values. What are my values? If you don't have clear, uh, concise values, you, it will be very hard for you to get anywhere in life. Now, values are not necessarily, um, I want to do this and exactly that, but values are something, they're more like a compass. So it's like my values, for example, my highest value is growth. So I always have to challenge myself and grow. If I'm not doing that, I'm not happy. That's how I can work 18 hours a day and be super happy, you know, sleep like five hours a night. I'm like, yay, I wake up every morning like, oh my God, I love my life so much. I am working 18 hours a day because my value is growth. So my work is growth uh, and that's the same about rest. So I, I can't just rest and, you know, get to the, you know, I'm in the beach. So I can't just go to the beach and lay there all day and be happy. That's not the way I work because that's not my values. But on the other hand, if I go to the beach to have uh, an, a deeply a time to think deeply and reflect and get better ideas, I'm having an amazing time and I'm relaxing. So when values are, like Dan Pena says, when values are clear, all decisions are easy. Everything is simple. When your values are clear, your life will be so simple because you'll always know exactly what makes you happy and where you need to go. Okay. Second, uh, thirdly, goals and actions. So based on your values, you should set goals. And based on your goals, you should set small actions. So since my value is growth, one of the, I, I'm not tied to money. So people tell, you, tell me like, oh my God, you're so passionate about money. How long have you been so passionate about it? I'm like, uh, maybe five months. Before that, I haven't even thought about money. And they go like, oh, so what have you been thinking about? I'm like, oh, before that, it was a pickup. I want to learn how to be good with girls. So I challenged myself every day. I went out like four hours a night, every single night, because my value is growth. And the goal I chose to focus on is my relationships with women. And now I'm transferring that goal into money, but my values are always clear and they don't change. They could get more precise, but they do not change. Because values are, you, you change them once in a few decades usually. Um, okay, so actions is uh, quite simple. It's what actions am I taking daily, consistently, to get to my goal. If your goal, your main goal is, for example, to make money, and you're not taking actions every single day to make money, and I'm not talking, I'm specifically saying this to the guys here who are big on learning. Uh, learning is not taking action to make money. I'm talking specifically having a, even the stupidest idea of how to make money and trying that. That's better. The stupidest idea is better than per, a person who only learns and never actually takes action and waits for the perfect plan. So what's better is to actually try and, um, and, and make, you know, make it happen. Like you could fail, you could win. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, and actually, Joshua, I just added in. Uh, he, he was saying that's him when you were saying that. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of guys here like that, so that's why it was very important for me to to stress that. Um, if you're not taking action, then your learning is useless, and um, it doesn't do anything. The only knowledge you can apply is knowledge that's based on previous reference experiences. So let's say that you have the stupidest business idea, like you've did like a $47 product and you just started contacting people on Facebook. You know, you don't even have the product yet. You just know you can do it. So, so you try selling, you, get, you have a payment link on PayPal and just try making people buy it. So you get on the phone with them, talk with people on Facebook, tell them to get on the phone and try to sell. You already have now reference experiences. So let's say it worked or it didn't work, it doesn't matter. Now you have actual experience so you know what it's like and you can take the information Matt gives you and actually apply it but when you're just learning a lot without actually taking action that will fuck up your progress you have no idea how much it will delay your progress 
you're better off not learning at all. Because when you have too much information in your brain, you'll be stuck in paralysis by analysis. Because you'll say like, oh, I can do um, maybe uh, email building, but list building, but no, but, but, but I can do high ticket, but, but which, why should I market? So I have AdSense and I have AdWords and Facebook. and eh, Your brain will explode, okay? Since you're not taking action because that's just thinking based on thinking. So make sure, okay, now I'm in the, I'm in the zone. So uh, just make sure that you're always taking action towards the money and then that information will be applicable. Finally, that's the hidden part that nobody knows is the three principles of mastery of habits. So these principles, I will get to them uh, more in detail later, but they are self-discipline, self-management, and emotional fuel. Every single su successful person is a master of at least two of these principles, and preferably three, although that's not necessary. Okay, moving on. So, uh, growth, self-assessment. Please um, ask yourself, maybe in the recording, maybe later, maybe if you have, uh, you can do it in 20 seconds, to ask yourself, what are your values? And if you still don't have a clear answer, that is your first priority. If you don't have clear values, then you will not be able to do anything uh, big in your life because as uh, Steve Jobs says, success is for mad people because any sane person would quit because of the sheer amount of bullshit you have to go through. So you have to really love what you're doing. And to love what you're doing, you have to know what are your values. Secondly. Yeah, I, I believe Steve Jobs said that when he, uh, when uh, he was, what was that? I think it was like he was on D7. Uh, he was on, in that conference and uh, where was this interview with Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and, you know, he was asked, well, what's like a secret? And he said, well, you know, you have to love what you do because if you don't, then, then shit hits the fan, as Dan likes to say very often, <laughs> you know. Any, uh, any sane person would quit by then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. So second question you should ask yourself is, am I moving towards my values daily? Now, your values are, they're, they're not, um, there's not something you can take lightly. Your values, if you want to be a high performance person, somebody who actually le left a legacy behind and made big things happen, your values should be your top priority above anything. So since my value is growth, I will kill anyone who will stop, try and stop my growth. I will, I will move countries. I will spend as much money as I need. I will work three days in a row, which I have done just to get to my values because your values, your vision, that should be the most important thing in your life, the most sacred thing above all. And if your values are not clear, you will not have the drive and the motivation to make it happen. So, yeah, and I would like to add very quickly, you know, there's a saying in, in sales, a very popular saying, uh, and uh, it says, you know, a confused mind, what does it do? Uh, well, it does nothing. A confused mind never buys, right? So if you want to sell to somebody, you can never make it too complicated. You want to, uh, well, you know, whatever you're selling, you may want to make it complicated, but... You don't want uh, your prospect to feel confused. That you never want to do. And the first sale that you have to make is to yourself. So you have to sell yourself. And how do you do it? Well, first, you figure out what your values are. Because remember, confused mind never buys. So make sure there's no, confused, no confusion when it comes to value on your part. Yeah, your mind will always uh, move towards the least resistance area. So that is uh, something you cannot escape. Remember that you, your mind, your body, your actions will always move towards the least resistance. Now you may think, oh, but I'm working out and that's not the least resistance or I'm working hard on making money. That's not the least resistance. It is because it's that important to you that if you won't do it, you'll be in a lot of pain. So with your options, that is the best option. 
So yeah, another way to, to say that is to say that any living organism moves to where it ages the least. So sometimes, you know, even like working out, actually working out, that makes you age less. Uh, so uh, that would be another explanation why. Yeah, so when you have clear values, breaking them is so painful that you will never even want to break them. Okay, so um, thirdly, are my habits optimal to reach my values? So um, if I take what I'm doing today and I multiply it a long time, like along a year from now, two years, and remember everything in life is exponential. So if I take my existing habits, for example, take a guy who's only learning and not taking action, if you multiply it by 10 years, he will basically not only stay in place, but actually go down. But take somebody who's doing like a bit of learning, but also taking action and learning from that. So if you multiply that by 10 years, maybe he won't be rich in one year, but he will be rich in 10 years. Okay, so um, you should ask yourself, what is your efficiency in the principles of habits? So how good am I in self-discipline? Now, what is self-discipline? Self-discipline is your ability to delay gratification. It is your ability to do what you know you should do and not what at that moment your lower consciousness wants you to do. If you have low self-discipline, you should try um, very gently getting used to doing uh, harder and harder things. So maybe... And it, it's all based on consistency. So maybe try eating an apple every day. Maybe try uh, waking up five minutes earlier every day. Whatever it is, set a goal, a small goal, and make it happen every single day for like two weeks and then build on it. And once you build on it, that's how you develop willpower, which as you know, Matt says, you cannot succeed without willpower. It's even more important than knowledge. Okay. Secondly, how good am I in self-management? So self-management for me means um, how well do I know myself? I divide it into three categories. One is what drives me, what makes me happy, how, what do I respond to? So I know, for example, about me, like I said in the beginning of the talk, that after five minutes of talking, I get in the zone and then I'm not anxious and it's really easy for me to get into this uh, really long lecture. Um, I you know, know I can relate to that. I can, Rabia, I can relate to that so much. Sometimes, you know, uh, let's say I'm with my assistant and I'm like, you know what? Uh, I will just, you know, shoot this very quick video. Uh, and it will only take me like, you know, uh, maybe five minutes. So, uh, and everybody's like, no, 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 Matt, you want to go. And I'm like, no, 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 it, it will only take like five minutes. And then after like a few minutes, like after like four minutes, I'm, you know, talking, doing the video. And then before I know it, uh, four minutes pass by and, and everybody is like mad at me. Matt, you said the, the video is going to be just five minutes long, but man, when I get in, in the zone, I can't <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I, I'd rather, I can even keep talking to the wall. Uh, <laughs> it's that fun. Um, yeah, that's a, learn, that's a skill you learn and pick up, by the way, by approaching girls. Uh, you learn not to be dependent on their reactions, so you just uh, amuse yourself. Uh, you just enjoy hearing yourself talk. Uh, and that's very important for selling, too, by the way. Yeah, you, you, you should tell that story later about, uh, uh, you know what I mean. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Um, okay, so self-management, I divide it into three things. First of all is knowing your uh, strengths. That means you know what drives you. You know, you know that at a certain time in the morning, you're more productive. You know that when you uh, kiss your girlfriend in the evening, it gives you like a boost of energy, like whatever it is, but you know your kinks. You know what makes you tick. Uh, on the other hand, self-management is also knowing where do you fall. So for example, um, I know that I am a, a highly addictive uh, personality. So anything I try, I'm, uh, I, it's like either a, a not doing it at all or doing a lot of it. So for example, um, 
I used to smoke uh, marijuana before I wanted to start, you know, making a lot of money and become good at it. And then I realized, okay, so if I want to be good at making money, I have to stop completely because I, as a person, do not know how to do a bit of something. It's either a lot every day or nothing at all. So just the, this knowledge saves me like months of frustrations trying to quit it, for example, or tr trying to you know, not use a lot, but then I would use it. And then, so I know that about myself. So that saves me a lot of time uh, and many other things. And uh, the third component of self-management is um, basically your time management. So it's your ability to control time and use it as in your favor. So what I mean by that is that you have a certain system or just in your head even, a certain perception of time where you're able to use it in your advantage. So... Uh, for me, it changes uh, every few months. So I might have like a few months where every single thing I do is on my calendar. So I know exactly what I'm going to do next week. Or right now, because I'm working 18 hours a day, um, I, I just know how to run my time. So I know that some things will take me, you know, like Matt says, I know something will take me a bit more time. So I plan ahead. Something will take me maybe, uh, maybe I know that I'm procrastinating when I want to do something specific. So I'll plan ahead. So uh, do know your time constraints and how you use time. Um, and thirdly, how good am I in emotional fuel? So emotional fuel is what I like to call basically motivation. So it's your ability to inspire yourself and become um, highly motivated to do things. Now, you... Uh, by the way, so emotional fuel, it's built in two ways, either by pumping yourself up in the moment, like thinking about what you want to get, getting angry because you don't have it, like that's short term. Long term emotional fuel is having accomplishments. So I, for example, uh, a few days ago, I've made a lot of money. So I know that um, if I just do what I did a few days ago, I'm going to make a lot of money again, maybe even more. So that's emotional fuel based on experience and it's much more it's much stronger because it's long term that's why guys like uh donald trump can make deals of millions of dollars where they can lose like like one tenth of their whole uh capital but they're very comfortable because they have that history so yeah but the first uh friend that Pi has and i remember Pi was telling the story he walks into this guy's office and he sees a lawyer bill for like $500,000. And Pi was like, how, how come you're paying like $500,000 for a lawyer? And uh, his friend explained uh, to Ty then, well, look, I'm in the business of building skyscrapers. And, you know, this bill, bill you know, I, I paid $500,000 and the deal didn't even go through. But I know that one out of 10 deals goes through. And when it does, I make 50 million bucks. So, and most people, they give up after like, you know, one time or two times or three times. Almost nobody gets to like the fifth time because, you know, you spend like $500,000 just doing your due diligence, seeing if everything is, is set up properly. And then you find out it's not, and you do this like, you know, imagine doing this six times and man, that's, <laughs> that's hard. Uh, you know, the first time I went, uh, approaching girls, uh, though I was, I got lucky because I didn't get rejected. Uh, but I remember there was one night where I was like, I approached like every girl and every girl was like, get off me. And after like 10 times, I was like, oh, something is seriously wrong here. But because I had great nights before, I was like, well, I'm sure it, it's just a numbers game. Maybe I just got super unlucky. So I kept going and uh, I met a few girls that night. So yeah, what's Robbie, you know, what Robbie's saying here, it's so, so true. That's exactly why I said that if you don't have a lot of willpower, build it up by doing small things 
my coach Steve even said uh, how to become uh, rich and successful by flossing every day. That's his mentality. So, uh, <laughs> you know, another good saying is a man who is faith, a man who is faithful with little, with a small amount is also faithful with a lot. Uh, and that's pretty much, I have found is true pretty much with everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so when you have experience, you know, okay, so I managed to, I decided I'm going to eat an apple a day and I did it. And then I decided I'm going to also work out five minutes every day and I did it. And this builds up and builds up and builds up. And that's why I can, for example, say like, okay, so anything I want to do, I can achieve because I've put myself in such extreme situations of managing myself that I know that whatever I'm going to take on, it's not only small, but I know that I have the mental tools and willpower to make it happen. So I will not fall into rationalization like, oh, it's getting late, so I'll, I, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Or, you know, uh, um, I don't want to do it right now. Uh, maybe later, you know, all that things. I've been through that. And I know the way my brain works. And I learned how to leverage my brain to actually make my brain go like, yeah, do it, do it, do it. And we'll talk about it very soon. So you only need two of these three principles to be successful, but one is not enough. Because if you have only two, the third one would feed off the other two. So let's say you're very good at having uh, self-management and emotional fuel. So that means that you know exactly what makes you tick, what are your weak points, and you also have a lot of motivation. So just that will build self-discipline in itself. Same with any other combination. A person who is very disciplined and knows how to manage himself, that's more like practical people. He will build the fuel gradually just by the sheer successes he's going to get. So he's going to make it more slowly, but he's going to have a lot of success. And that success is like, whoa, I want more. So that will build up the fuel by itself. So you only need two, but one is not enough. Because if you just have, for example, emotional fuel, but you can't manage yourself and you don't have self-discipline, you're just gonna like fly and crash and fly and crash like I used to do like, like for years. And I would just start and crash and start and crash. And that actually creates negative emotional fuel because you have a history of starting things and not finishing them and that sucks. Okay, so um, difference between Success and failure. In this part, we're going to talk about uh, what is the difference between someone who is insanely successful and someone who is an utter failure. And it's not what you think. It's actually um, in the small things. So, uh, sorry, I skipped ahead. Okay, so um, the small choices that make, we make every day uh, shape us. This is the difference between successful people and 95% of people. So all successful people um, are the same in that sense. So every single successful people follows these principles. You can feel free to check it. I checked it for four years and I still haven't found one that doesn't do it. Usually most uh, successful people come from bad backgrounds, but that's uh, uh, less relevant. So. Success and failures, when, when I say that they're just compounds of small actions over time, what that means is that the difference between success and failure, and listen closely, this is extremely important, the difference between success and failure is not this big, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, like, freedom, let's do it. And then you like, you march forward and you do it with all the resistance. No, no. Success is very quiet. It's the small things you do every single day that compound and add up over time. Same with failure. Even take someone like Donald Trump, who has had such huge failures that he lost all of his money, like billions. He was in billions of dollars of debt. But today, he's worth more than $4 billion. Why? Because if you fail, big time, like bam, like crashing to the ground. But you have success habits, small actions every day that are success. 
you will get back on track and be successful. And on the other hand, if you're a failure and you win the lottery, 95% of the people who win the lottery lose all their money and are actually in debt within like one year. Yeah, but that's so true. And you know, Dan Pena, uh, I went to his seminar three times and he says all the time that I was there, he had on this one, one little thing that he was saying and it was, you know guys, I'm not that different from you. I'm just, let's say 10% different, but it's for right 10%. So, I mean, what you're saying here, uh, that's so true. And, and the differences, all the differences, they are usually small things. It's, it's nothing like big, it's in the small things. <clears throat> okay, um, thanks Matt. So, average people make a neutral amount of good and bad, and, and bad small actions. So, most people are average or below. So that means that they have a, a small amount of a bit bad habits and a small amount of a bit good habits. And overall, they're not really going anywhere. So they're actually slowly going down, but very slowly. So it's neutral and looks natural. Um, it's, it's very hard to um, actually get yourself into a situation where you're on a quick downslope. That usually will take something like drugs. So then again, you have to be aware of the entropy principle, which is the second law of thermodynamics. And what it says is that a system can only maintain uh, the same stability it currently has or lose it with time unless some external force was applied to make it more solid. So what that means in our lives is that your body, for example, Will deteriorate, with, will deteriorate with time if you don't take care of it. Your brain will lose willpower and mental power if you don't use it. Anything that you don't actively uh, sustain and put pressure on will deteriorate, and that includes your business. So I'm sorry for all the guys here who have like the, the dream of passive income not doing anything. You would also have to maintain that or you will lose it. So. That's the principle of entropy. Always be aware of it. There is no such thing as a neutral, uh, a neutral um, uh, like not going up and not going down, just staying neutral. It's either up or down because the entropy effect is always here. Um, so the small actions you take every day are what is going to make you or break you why 95% of the people don't take small actions, successful people do. It's very simple. The simple people, you know, the unsuccessful people, the majority, the only reason they don't take the actions successful people take, and I'm talking about the difference between having millions of dollars, having the perfect girlfriend, having amazing lifestyle, and, and that, and the difference between that and let's say being obese, hating your wife, not having money, the only, and not being happy, of course. So the only difference between that is the small actions. And people know that. Instinctively, they know that. But they choose not to do it because it's so easy not doing it. There is no immediate gratification, and it looks meaningless. So what does it matter if that guy is, uh, you know, working out like 15 minutes every morning? Or, you know, what does it matter if that guy is reading a book like, like 20 minutes every night? What does it matter if that guy is looking at his vision and thinking about his life every day? That's what they think. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll do it yesterday. I'll do it tomorrow. And they never do it. And that's why they're not successful. So success is on the level of, ha of habits, not action. So whenever you want to be successful at something in your life, never look at it from the perspective of actions, but from the perspective of habits. When you want to have a lot of money, don't think what are the actions that I need to take to get there, to get to the result. Think of who I need to become. What habits do these people have? That's why having a mentor is so powerful because by being around them, you, you pick up on the small habits they have that make them so successful. And every single successful person has just a few habits that he attributes to most of his success. So for Ty Lopez, that would be reading books. For Dan Pena, that would be 
uh, the quantum leap, meaning uh, trying to do things that are beyond his power, his current power, and and uh, getting the cars he can't get. That's also a habit. And uh, Matt, Matt, what what is your um, success habit or habits? Well, I think there are a few of them, but uh, I was pretty good at focusing just on one thing. You know, but then I was. Uh, I remember when I got into uh, tennis and to be more specific into table tennis um, in a year I actually beat my coach and my coach has been playing table tennis for 20 years uh, regularly like uh, a few times a week three times four times five times six times a week and I beat him in one year uh, and it was such a close battle it was crazy but I was the only one like um, you know, I was talking to my coach and he said, look, Matt, we got like, you know, uh, 20 students here and you made more progress than everybody else put together. Just you, you, you know. So I think my, my thing is focus. I can be very, very focused, but at the same time, uh, if I need to juggle a few things, I can do that. Although that, <laughs> that, that definitely is learned. Um, but, you know, for me, it's focus. I like what Warren Buffett says. He says, you know, uh, put all of your eggs in one basket and, one, and then watch that basket. Now, if you are not, uh, now that advice is not, I wouldn't give it to everybody. If you are like less risk tolerant, then I wouldn't take that advice literally, but think about it, it makes a lot of sense. And then like Warren Buffett says again, you know how to get rich ones. So I thought, okay, if I watch one basket very closely, I will get rich. And I did that. So I think that's my one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you look at all these successful people. And if you truly look at what I'm saying to you about habits, you'll see that long before they were successful in their endeavors, they were successful at other things. So before being successful right now in money, I was successful in pickup and building myself up using habits. Before Matt was rich, he was successful at tennis. Before Arnold Schwarzenegger became, you know, all that famous and, uh, you know, the bodybuilder and everything. People think that's why he's famous. You know that you, most people don't know that Arnold Schwarzenegger has made his first million in real estate. So people who are successful generally have a background of success because it's not one thing they're good at. It's the habits of being a successful person, which is what I'm teaching you this moment. So success is on the level of habits, not actions. You can't be successful at just one thing. You have to be a successful person. Successful persons, people have good habits of successful people. Uh, so, 95% of people are fluctuating uh, between uh, below optimal performance to just plain shit. So as you heard from Matt, he became like the best tennis player. And uh, I know Arnold Schwarzenegger was the best at uh, real estate. And then Pena had like a 95% closing ratio on real estate. So every single successful person has reached mastery in an, at least one thing before or uh, either before his main thing or his main thing is his mastery. But um, regular people don't have mastery at anything. They are just shit or below okay at everything. I, I think Ty says that most people are okay at a lot of things, but they're not like very good on one thing. And they, ah, they're very good at things that don't matter, but they're not good at things that do matter. Yeah, you know, uh, Joe Salton, Ty's mentor, he used to say all, all the time, uh, one of the worst things that, can, that you can do is spend a lot of time getting good at the wrong thing. Uh, or Brian Tracy, he likes to say, you know, you know what's like the, the biggest strategy? It's doing something very well that might not be done at all. Cool. Uh, okay, so 
Now we're going to talk about what I like to call the compound effect or the interest effect. Um, and I have two stories here. They're taken from the book called The Slight Edge. This is, uh, you know, one of these books, uh, for me at least, that was a milestone in my progress as a person. Um, so basically what the compound effect means is that when you're consistent in doing something, it will add up. So let's say um, you want to um, go to, you know, get better at uh, fitness. So you go to the gym every day for like 10 minutes. Uh, or let's say you work at your house every day for 10 minutes. So the 10 minutes, the result you're going to get from, from just 10 minutes in the first week of doing that would be very different from the results you'll get in like two years from now if you keep at it and stay consistent. So the price will go up the more, the longer you keep that consistency. It's like a combo. It's like uh, don't break the chain because the more you keep it, the bigger the reward will be. And when you break it, it will be very hard to get back. That's why there's almost been no NBA player who's stopped doing, being in the NBA for like a year and then came back and was actually successful. There are very few people who have done that. So to, to make an example, um, I'd like to say two short stories uh, about the compound effect. So the first one is the reef algae. So there was like an algae that's like a, a plant in the reef. Uh, it's like a pool. Um, and it's super small. It's uh, about the size of a needle. And it wanted to reach the other side of the lake. Now, everybody, all the other plants said like, oh, come on, man. Like, you're not going to succeed. No, no way. Uh, but there's one special property about the reef algae. And that property is that it multiplies and that is the way it reproduces. So when you have one algae, it turns into two. And then these two, each one also multiplies, so it's four. So on the first day, that algae multiplied once, and then it's like two algae, so it's like two small hairs. Um, nobody noticed it, but it went on and on and on. And after two weeks, the reef algae was covering about a third of the lake. Because when you multiply one two times, you know, the power of two, and you keep doing that 14 times, um, you, it's going to be a very, very big number. Or like Matt says, with the domino effect, where you have one domino and then a domino twice as big and then one twice as big, if you do that multiplied by, I think, either 37 or 67 times, you're going to reach the moon with the height of the domino. So... Basically, that reef algae was able to cover the entire lake in just two, three weeks by keeping on multiplying its efforts. And this also applies to your self-development as a person. So let's say that as a person, you make sure you're twice as good as you were uh, every single year. That means that next year, you're going to be um, twice as good, and then twice as good, then twice as good. That means that in 10 years, you're going to be about 100 times better, not 10 times better. So keep that in mind. And the story of the giant flywheel is, uh, imagine there's like a two-ton flywheel, and that's a, that's a metaphor for success. So you need to spin that giant flywheel. And you start with a push, and that push moves it maybe like, like a few centimeters. And you keep trying and you keep pushing. And after like an hour, you've made just the first spin. So now it's built up a little bit of momentum. So every time you keep pushing it, you don't stop and it gets easier and easier. Now the momentum keeps building and keeps building. And then you can spin it in like uh, two minutes instead of an hour. And it's a full spin. But now it has so much momentum that you actually leave the spin wheel alone. And it will keep spinning on its own. Now, somebody who looks from the side, so that's a metaphor for being extremely successful. Somebody who looks from the side, any regular person, including you, when you see someone who's extremely successful, you'll be asking yourself, what is the giant push or the giant force that made this flywheel spin so fast? And what you don't realize is that you can't say that it was the first push or the fifth or the thousands 
the thousands. I don't even know how to pronounce it. So even the 10,000th push. You can't say this one was the one who did it or that one. So it's a combination of all of the pushes. And if you just separated them, so you'd like pushed, stopped, pushed, stopped, pushed, stopped, you'd have had 10,000 pushes of one centimeter. But because you did it consecutively and used the compound effect, every single push was building on all the other pushes before it. And the momentum kept gaining and gaining. And that's how you reach such huge success. It's by actually becoming consistent. So I could uh, tell you without even asking Matt that since he opened his first business, he's pretty much been in business. You know, he hasn't opened like the third business and then went like, oh, I'm making a lot of money. So uh, I can take a whole year off and next time I'll build a million dollar business. No, no, you have to build every single su success on top of the earlier one and keep going, keep moving forward. Don't stop the momentum. So please make like an honest self-assessment of your trend in health, finance, self-development, relationships, vision, and presence. Presence uh, is more like uh, spiritually, like how, how much you're in tune with life. So remember that you're either going up or going down. So if there's one of these six areas where you're going down, quickly write it down or think about it and you know, put it somewhere where you can see it later. And rem remember that if you're on a downtrend, the compound effect will work against you. So the more time you wait, the harder it will be to stop the momentum. So try now. If you're, for example, your health is a bit bad, don't wait. Start already doing just five minutes workout every day. That will fix your health. That will prevent the downtrend. And that will prevent the exponential downtrend. Uh, same with relationships or anything in your life. And again, when an uptrend is when the sum of the things you do every day is positive. So let's say uh, you're working out like 30 minutes every morning, uh, but your eating habits are okay. Now, if you take neutral eating habits and very positive exercise habits, you get a, a sum that's like positive. So that means you might not be going up as fast as you could, but at least you're on an upward cycle. So make sure no area of your life gets left behind. You can just do five minutes of health, five minutes of vision, whatever it is, five minutes of meditation for presence. Just make sure you're not letting any area of your life go down because once it starts going down, it will be very hard stopping it down the road. So day-to-day -day habits to fix all downslopes. If you do all of these things, you don't have a problem, man. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to have a very good life. I promise right now I would give like $1,000 to the person who's done all of these things every single day for like 10 years and is not successful and super happy. So working out is extremely important. That's the first priority of your day. I work out between five minutes and like half an hour every single morning. Uh, that's because I'm working very hard, but on periods where I'm not, I'm working even more, working out even more. So make sure you're working out because that will take care of your health. That is extremely important. And a healthy body has a healthy mind. So if you're not working out, it will be hard to focus. Yeah, and I like to say, you know, my first emergency every single day is working out. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you, maybe you don't see it, but, but uh, Matt says he has a very uh, athletic build. So um, just so you know. Uh, cool. So meditation. Always, uh, if you have any trouble concentrating, relaxing, becoming social, uh, having good ideas, you're not ha as happy as you could, you're a bit anxious, anything of that sort of well-being, um, try and meditate. Even five minutes a day, it will change your life. I just do breathing meditation. That's like five to ten minutes of just uh, focusing on your breath. And whenever you have a thought, you just focus back on the breath. It does wonders. Green smoothies, that's uh, obvious. Uh, they're a bit disgusting at first, but you get used to them and you actually start liking the taste. Reading books, uh, no need to explain. Gratitude is good for anyone who's negative sometimes. 
I wake up every morning and I do this naturally because it's a habit. I'm just so grateful that I'm alive and that, that whatever dream I had was just a dream because I love my life that much that no dream could be better than my life. So gratitude is also fixed. Um, yeah, and getting back to, to the books, you know, sometimes if I don't read uh, for like a week or a few weeks, I'm like, this is how it feels to be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so either read or get a mentor or do audio books or listen to podcasts by smart people. You don't have to read books, but make sure you incorporate it into your life somehow. So at the moment, I'm not reading any books, but I'm constantly listening to Dan Pena, to uh, lectures on my uh, headphones when I'm uh, going on the beach, when I'm going to take a breakfast. So make sure you're, you have good information injected to you every day. Um, that will give you good ideas. So working smarter, um, what that means is that you have the habit of, let's say most people who work, they are not trying to work smarter. So their habit is just come, go to work, be dumb, get back, hate your life, and repeat. Um, but what I recommend is every day ask yourself, how can I make my work more efficient? How can I get more stuff done in less time? And just that habit alone will make you an extremely good employee. And also as an entrepreneur, uh, you should have that drive to always be more efficient because if you're not becoming more and more efficient, uh, somebody else will and you'll be left behind. Um, good sleep. Um, I currently sleep about four or five hours a night. Um, but that's because I've consciously decided to work 18 hours a day. Um, but whenever I don't do that marathon thing, I just sleep eight hours every day. That's very important to be more happy, more relaxed. So I do have the obvious, uh, uh, bad, uh, bad effects of not sleeping. So I'm a lot more anxious. Uh, I can snap sometimes on a, like without noticing. Um, but I'm very much aware of that and that's a sacrifice I'm making because my work productivity is not affected. So do know yourself. And if you're not in that zone of like working super hard and that's like something you can only do for like a month or two, then sleep well will help you a lot. That means, that means no lighting at all, like completely dark room, preferably some sort of a nature noise, maybe from your phone and app or something. Of, uh, that makes nature noises. Uh, try and have more um, better alarm clocks that don't just wake you up, but you know s gradually help you wake up. Uh, kind acts. Uh, also, try and do something nice for people. You know, give something for free. Um, you know, help someone that will make you feel much happier. And vision actions. That's what I like to call when you think about your vision. And you try every day taking like some step towards it. So something that you wouldn't normally do, but um, it's, a vi it's an act towards your vision. So do these habits every day and you're good for life. Okay, so the power of habits. Now we're going to, into the most interesting uh, part where hey, I will, yeah. I uh, just wanted to comment on meditation. Uh... I made it a practice to go ahead and start meditating five minutes between activities. It kind of oils the, the transition and uh, it empties my mind from the previous activity that I was doing and it allows me to focus more on what I'm doing next. It also lowers the stress and it makes the transition. Uh, it keeps me from burning my willpower as quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meditation is, uh, I, I should have maybe expanded on it more. Um, but yeah, m a lot of successful people meditate, um, either, uh, consciously doing meditation or they have some ritual. Like I currently don't meditate, but what I do is go to the, like, I just step outside my house and walk on the beach for like half an hour every morning to clear my head. So the power of habits, this is, uh, my favorite part. Uh, this is where you're going to learn the, probably my best techniques, the, my most secret techniques that I use to achieve a lot of success in pretty much every area of my life. So um, how to build habits using the faster method. So first of all, we'll lay some foundations. Uh, there are the wrong tool to create good habits. This is what most people do. 
is first of all willpower and suffering it out so people are like okay so if i just force myself to go to the gym or to work hard then uh it will be okay nope doesn't work you'll burn yourself and that's that self-anger that's when a person is goes like you know you know people who have every like few months they're like i hate where i'm at right now oh my god my life is shit right now oh no 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 like like I have to change it now. And they go into this manic thing uh, that also ties with the third one, spurs of uh, motivation and inspiration. So it could be negative motivation, like I hate my life, or it could be good motivation, like, oh my God, I can do this. Whatever you do, don't rely on motivation because motivation is an emotion and emotions obviously fluctuate. And if you rely on motivation, you have a hundred percent chance over time to fail, because. Hey, Robert, Robert, can I add something? Yeah, sure. Uh, I forgot if I, it was in a book or audio, but I was uh, reading that uh, instead of saying, "Oh, I have to get up and go to work," or "Oh, I have to get up and start my day," be like, "Oh man, I get to get up, I get to go to work, I get to get up, I get to enjoy life." So you know, just always look at the positive side. Um, no, on that actually, on that area i would um I just personally i do not recommend that if you if your life is truly shit and you wake up every morning and you hate your life then that's a good thing because that's your mind that's your inner self telling you you're living a shitty life so i don't need to convince myself that i have a good life because i love my life so you should actually use that as motivation but what i'm saying is don't rely on it use that as a maybe an extra push, but never rely on motivation. Uh, there's a famous quote that says, ha like motivation gets you started, habit keeps you going. So motivation is a good starting tool, but when you, get, when you start something uh, for motivation, always remember that you will have to build some consistency and habit or else it will not stick. This is what causes you to suck at everything. So if you're using one of these three methods to build habits, uh, you're not going to be successful. Your life is going to be a very depressing uh, mess. Um, so after you know, enough times of uh, trying and failing and trying and failing, you just give up. And if I hadn't met, met Steve, who taught me the power of habits, um, I might have given up imagine that like you're talking to me right now and you know you know what i've accomplished and how i love my life imagine if i hadn't met steve and i would have just kept trying and kept trying and failing and failing and failing i don't know i mean i appreciate myself but i don't know if i would have stuck i might have eventually given up and that to me is death that is a tragedy that is a, a, like a person dying in my mind because his potential is, you are your potential. If you don't make sure you feel, live up to your potential, then that's sort of like dying to me. So any major decision should be accepted as habit and treated with the exact same respect. Any big thing you want to do in your life, whether it be working out, making a lot of money, uh, becoming a real estate agent, becoming a millionaire, whatever, Anything you want to do, you have to accept. You have to stop and accept the fact that this is not a spur of enthusiasm. If you want it, it will have to become part of yourself and a habit. Not a quick motivation, not a get rich, rich quick scheme, but actually a life journey that will never stop. So nature always wins. Habits always win. Your habits will make or break you you are not stronger than your habits. If you have very strong habits that are negative, you cannot beat them. You can change them, but you will not beat them. If you have a habit to be late, you will always be late. Something will always come up and you'll be late. If you have a habit to be a loser, you will always be a loser no matter what good uh, strategy you find. So what you wanna change is yourself in terms of what habits you have not the actions you do because your habits will always pull you back to who you are right now. So I had habits of starting and quitting things and procrastinating. And since these were my habits, no matter how motivated and how good of a plan I had, I always failed because habits always win at the end. So your brain, imagine it like a horse and it's tied to you. 
Okay, so you can either get that horse on your side and moving towards where you want to go, which means you have good habits. So let's say you want to go to this direction and uh, your brain is also going into the same direction, which is the direction of success, fitness, and you know, uh, making money. So what that means is that when you feel like giving up or you feel like not going to the gym today, because your, your habit is going to the gym, your brain will actually go like, go, 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 go. And your brain will convince you to go to the gym. That's nice, huh? Instead of you trying to force yourself to go, your brain will force you to go if you get the habits on your side. And that is exactly the same on the opposite side. If you do not get it on your side, if you have habits of lazy people, and then you try start get, starting to go to the gym, your brain will win. Because your brain is like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And you cannot beat your brain. You can beat it once. You can beat it twice. But you cannot beat it over time. So um, what is important about habits is that they are not dependent on external factors. This is an advantage and a disadvantage for any person. So what that means is that if you take a person who is in the habit of being extremely unhappy, complaining, whining, you can take that person to Hawaii and he will still find something to be angry about. You can pay for the ticket, you can put him in the best hotel, he will find something to get angry about. And on the opposite side, if you have success habits, you basically have a guarantee to succeed. Because no matter what happens, you will always get back on your feet because these are your habits. Now habits could only always change. They constantly fluctuate. Habits are simply the things that you do the most. So your brain has these uh, uh, optical, uh, like these wires, electrical wires, and whenever you do something, your brain will shoot electronic signals through that wiring. And the more you do it, the tighter the wiring is going to get, which means the faster the electric signal will pass. So the more you do something, the more like scientifically, biologically, the more your brain will make that a habit. So our brain is hardwired to follow habits and will reward us when you do. That means that when you have good habits, your brain will reward you for doing them. And when you have bad habits, it's exactly the same. So if you're an obese person, and you just like to eat Cheetos, and that's your habit, your brain will reward you whenever you eat Cheetos. You will feel good, some sort of uh, relief. Your life may be shit, but at least that will make you happy for these few seconds. So again, the good thing about habits is that they're like passive income. So what that means is that if I have a good health habits going on, then I don't need to think about my health because I'll just do it naturally. If I had, so for example, I don't focus on eating good food. I don't even think about it because I've built that habit so deep that I will not touch anything that is not healthy. So I can feel comfortable focusing on other things and I don't have to expand willpower to not eat bad things because I'm just so disgusted by it because my brain is habit habitated to eating only healthy things. So it will punish me if I eat something bad and it will reward me when I eat something good. So there's not even a debate. I don't even need to convince myself. My brain does it for me passively, automatically. So uh, common elements to goals gone wrong. So whenever you have failures in life, um, it's probably one of these um, seven elements that caused that failure. So uh, I'll go through it quickly. So emotional decisions for strategic change. So if you, you've, you've had a, like a new strategy for success, a new decision, like I'm going to do this or this, and it was based only on emotions, that's a recipe for failure. Uh, if there's no specific strategy or plan, you know, who, he who doesn't, uh, he who fails to plan, plans to fail, as they say. Anything that's regarding a magic pill, anything where you're like, oh my God, I can get this, but not do the work. That's a guaranteed failure. Don't even start it, no matter how promising it looks. Um, something will fuck up. Something will fuck up. And I lost over $20,000 in stocks just by this small thing. Okay, I was about to make like 50000 And I was like, yeah, but if I'll put more, you know, it's a magic pill. It's a sure thing. 
So if I would have not treated it as a magic pill, I would have probably not been here. I would have been in like a, uh, in my uh, Ford Mustang by now at age 18. But um, I burned myself because I fell into the trap of a magic pill and it will seduce you. It will seduce you, so be careful. Overconfidence in yourself and your ability to focus. Remember, I'm extremely confident in myself, but I'm aware of my limits. So I know that I'm an addictive personality, so I will never, ever, ever, ever touch uh, marijuana or alcohol because I know that I'm either doing a lot of it or none of it. So I'm very, very confident in myself, but within the boundaries that I know I'm good at. I do not uh, think I'm, I'm um, all, all, all powerful and can do anything I want. I know that I have certain uh, things I cannot do. So that's an example of being aware of your limits and being aware of your limits will save you a lot of time and a lot of failure. So next one, making too many goals at once. Let's say you want to make more, be healthier. Don't, you know, do that thing people do where it's like, you know, in the New Year's resolutions, you know, by the way, I think the statistics is that like 90% of the New Year's resolutions, people don't like stop even trying after like a week. So the problem is people put way too many goals at once. So it's like, okay, so if I'm going to be fit, I'm going to eat healthy and do this and do this and do this. And your brain is, does not like to change. It's called neuroplasticity. Your brain would like to stay the same and you have a limited capacity to change it every day. If you build momentum, you can change it more faster, like faster. But if you, uh, just a regular person like me and you, you can only maybe learn like one, maybe, 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 maybe two, three habits in a month, no more. So don't try and challenge that. Trust me, you will not succeed. And also on that note, making your goals too big at once. So let's say you're a person who never worked out in his whole life. And that's what most people do. They go like, okay, so now I'm going to do this and this and this. And not only that, but they also set like huge goals, like an hour at the gym and only eating healthy. It will not work. You know, small steps. It's called Kaizen. It's a Japanese art of small steps that lead to the biggest reward. So the, the thing I discovered is that taking small steps would actually be much faster than taking big leaps. So let's say somebody offers you like a magic pill to get rich. You would actually get rich quicker by building it very, very slowly. Or let's say you want to become uh, healthy and fit. You would actually get to that goal faster by building your habits extremely slow than if you try it all at once. Because um, not only do these habits compound and add up, and, but they will also build up so fast you have no idea. If you just do it step by step, you will have a 100% confidence that you will do it and the success will build up exponentially you'll get there so fast you have no idea so always make small small progress and any successful people will tell you it's small progress day-to-day -day actions okay so the last one is looking at your destination as a result rather than a lifelong uh, process so whether it be getting rich becoming healthier having good relationships um, becoming more happy. Don't view it like a one-time thing or like a thing you just do for a while and then it's there. That's not the way it works. Any, anything you want to achieve in life, it's a process and it will never end. So uh, if you want to get more money, look at it as a lifelong commitment. Don't look at it like, no, uh, I want to do this now. You know, do, do you have that drive, but do know that uh, you're going to probably do this for life. So don't do it from the uh, frame where you're like, you want to, you know, do it to not have to do it. So do it to love doing it. Don't do it to not want to do it anymore. Uh, or as, uh, Matt said, uh, just a minute, a few minutes ago, um, you only have to get rich once. So once you've gotten rich, you just have to maintain it. So, um, the choice that I'm offering you to make is to base your entire life all of your decisions that you're going to make in the future based on just two principles. First principle is that habits powered by time, meaning habits not like multiply, like, like one good habit time one year is one year of that good habit, but 
but that habit times one year is like 10 times that habit because when you do it consistently, the results are exponential. So if you just follow the two principles that habits are exponential and will give you exponential result, and the second principle that habits can be consciously created, you will have a 100% chance to succeed in anything in your life. So the advantages to having this uh, belief system is that you will have 100% confidence to achieve any goal. So I have an absolute certainty that every single thing in my life that I will set out to do, I will do. And look, at, stop and think about your life for a moment. If you knew that everything you started, you're going to finish. And that also, that starts with small things like going to the gym every day. But for me, it also goes as far as being a multimillionaire. So I know if I'm going to do this and I'm, I'm, I'll stick to it and I know that, I know that being a millionaire, because I have that track record, I'm going to stick to it. And then it's going to happen. So there's 100% chance of success, basically. It could take like a year, 10 years, but it will happen. That's why I'm so at ease always. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I, I literally view myself a, as a millionaire at this point. Because I know I made the decision to be a millionaire and I know I have a 100% track record of succeeding and sticking with my decisions. So that gives you a lot of happiness and confidence and just relaxation. And secondly, you have a complete control of your life's design. So imagine being like your life's artist, you know, like you want to have a better health. You just do the process, da, 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 da. you build a good habit and you have good health. You want to have better relationships, you just do the process and you have good relationship habits. So you can either accept these two principles, go by them, use them and succeed exponentially or you could not use them and leave yourself to chance basically because these principles whether you like them or not they're like gravity they're here and they're gonna stay and you're affected by them whether you believe them or not so what I recommend to do is accepting these two principles because good habits are assets that pay you interest meaning that good habits are good things that will give you more and more with time but bad habits what that's where you pay the costs with interest so make sure you only have good habits in as many areas as you can that's living your life by your design now we're going to go into the actual practical way to build habits so finally i was waiting for this for so long <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I needed to um build the ground you know because people need yeah, to absolutely. understand the importance of principles of uh, habits so uh the key to habits is consistency i just put this here to remind you uh this is your only focus your only criteria whether a habit is uh, whether what you're doing is successful or not so you want to build like a a good fitness habit your only criteria for success is consistency your only criteria not how much you do not how often, not the, just consistency. So when building habits, you need to break down your goal into small daily set of actions and consciously adapt these habits. What that means is, let's say you want to be healthy, so you break down. What does being healthy mean? It means sleeping well, eating healthy, working out. Okay, now you can break that. So working out, do I have to go to the gym? No, I can just do weightlifting at home, like body weightlifting at home, like do push-ups or something. So you can always break it down into smaller and smaller actions that you do every day. Now, once you've picked an action, something that, you know, you even write a list, like a big list, like this bullet point list where you see here, just say, okay, so fitness, and you break it down into the actions that you want to implement over time. You just choose. So now the habits, uh, the faster habits system. So you just choose one thing you want to do. Just one. Don't start with two yet. Don't start with three because you're not yet habituated to creating habits because creating good habits is also a habit. So what you want to do is pick one thing from that big list of small actions, probably the most important thing you can uh, find, and just focus on that. So let's say, like I said, you want to be fit. Don't focus on working out, eating healthy, sleeping well, uh, drinking a lot of water. Choose one thing and even make it smaller. So don't focus on just eating healthy. 
break it down even more. Focus on just eating one apple a day. Well, let's say you want to work out. If, don't just say, I want to work out every day. Say, I want to do like, like 20 push-ups every day. And it's supposed to be super small, okay? So uh, the first component of the faster system, focus on just one thing. And again, if you even miss one of these things, you will most likely fail. Okay, this is an art, it is delicate, but once you learn it, it's instinctual and you'll be able to build habits much faster. So focus on one thing, two, adjust your expectations. What that means is um, you need to come from the frame where you acknowledge that your brain has what's called neuroplasticity, your brain doesn't wanna change, and whatever you're doing at the moment, you can probably change by like 5% not anymore. If you change even a bit more than 5%, you burnt your willpower for that day and that will fuck up everything, everything else you're doing that day. So, so if you want to start working out, focus on just one small activity and you know, it, it's okay if it looks very small and mundane. It could be the smallest thing, like I said, 20 push-ups, some tell people I'm working on my health. I'm becoming healthier. And they'll ask you what you're doing. What are you doing? I'm doing 20 push-ups every day. You know, they'll be like, they might say like, Oh, that's it. But you'll see in their faces. They'll be like, Whoa, like I'm sure that he's going to do it. Like there's a hundred percent chance that he's going to do it. So good for him. Wow. Like that's more than I do. <laughs> so Start as low as possible. Now, that's your requirement. So you say, I have to do at least 20 push-ups every day. You want to do 1,000? Do 1,000. But your minimum, your absolute minimum, that you will not go below, even if your mother just died, 100% of the time, that's the minimum. Don't go below it no matter what, okay? Because that's what will kill you if you don't. Uh, stick to it if you're not consistent. Thirdly, um, stop with the black and white thinking. So most people, like I said, they're very black and white and I still haven't figured out if it's because they are lazy or because they want to fail. But most people, if you, you I, I bet you, you don't know one person who just does like 10 minutes workout in the morning. You know, or maybe one in 10,000 people does that. Most people are either have shit help or work out all the time. But how many people do you know who actually do just like, like 10 minutes of workout every day? That will keep you healthy. But most people won't even do it because it looks so small and mundane. But that's the difference between a healthy, a healthy person and an unhealthy person. And... Um, Getting back to the point I said earlier, most people, 99% of people won't do it, but how many people you know who are extremely successful? About 1%, 2%. So that is a correlation, just so you know. Four. I think uh, Steven raised his hand. Ah, sure, yeah, it's, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, Steven? Hey, Robbie. Uh, you were talking about basically building up the habits and how you need to just basically focus on one thing. So something came to mind. Uh, lately, I've been having uh, issues with putting exercise into my routine because I'm just all over the place. I'm trying to make that transition from not as productive as I used to be to being productive now. So one of the things that comes to mind is I have a couple of things here at home, but I don't stick to but over there at uh, Gold's Gym in town, uh, they have this, uh, shake, this shake bar. They make the most delicious uh, protein shakes and whatnot. Would you say that this would be a good idea, uh, basically rewarding myself for going to the gym, just going to the gym, not necessarily exercising? Although, of course, whenever you go there, you're going to want to exercise because you're seeing everyone else do it. But just for going to the gym, reward yourself with one of those shakes, those delicious shakes. Um, no, no, that is not a good idea. Um, okay. keep it simple. You know, you know, the keep it simple, stupid, you know that like yeah. you, you, you're already doing something wrong. Like we just talked about it. Adjust your expectations. You're not currently, I mean, why would you need to 
uh, waste all that time, you know, spend like half an hour going to the gym um, and not even knowing if you're going to work out, that's already putting a lot of resistance on you because you're like, oh my God, I can, I, I don't know if I have the time. I don't know. Just every day you have to do 20 push-ups. That means just get up from your chair, 20 push-ups and done. Do that for 20 days and I promise you, you will not be able not to work out because your brain will go, you need to do push-ups, you need to do push-ups, you need to do push-ups because you've conditioned yourself to do that simple exercise that took you about one minute. All right, screw it, let's do it. Exactly, so you do that and trust me, you're gonna, you're gonna love working out. So, so that, that's, by the way, what I do. So when I have periods where I work out less, um, let's say I want to go back to the gym because when I'm at, at the gym, I'm hardcore. I work like two hours. So obviously I can't just go back to the gym and work two hours. So what I do is I condition myself into working out. So I do like morning, afternoon, and night. So I just do like 20 push-ups morning, 20 push-ups afternoon, 20 push-ups night. So three times a day, my brain has that automatic response where it's like, work out, work out, work out, work out. You just do that for 20 days, you're not going to be able not to work out. But the important thing here is, like we said, consistency. So if you said you're going to do 20 push-ups, nothing will, should stop you. No, there's no excuse in the whole world not to do push-ups. And I'm very brutal on myself. I'm very brutal on myself with that. You will, you, you will not go to sleep that day until you do these 20 push-ups. You, will, you have to write that in blood, like on your hand. You will not go to sleep before you do these 20 push-ups, which take, takes 20 seconds. Because that small thing, these 20 push-ups, are the difference between you being a successful person and you finding yourself 20 years from now in a really bad shape, unsuccessful. Because if you can't even force yourself, if you can't even force yourself to do 20 push-ups, how are you going to do all these other things you want to do? Just did them. <laughs> hey, Robbie. Yeah. Is there a punishment system? Like you say, if you don't do something, and you, uh, I guess not really like punish yourself, but uh, kind of like take away. Like if you have like, can you just ask the question? I, I just forgot what I was going to say. Like a, a punishment system kind of. Like say if you don't like say if you wake up you're supposed to do twenty push ups and you forgot. Like do you punish yourself? Yeah, uh, can you turn can you mute yourself because uh there's background noise? Um I personally do not punish myself because I find punishments are uh don't work. Uh they found that in psychology. Punishments do not work. Um what I do is I I very carefully, very analytically think what made me not do it? Because it's always like a, an ongoing effect. It's like a decision that caused the decision that caused the decision. So maybe that day I didn't do it because I was tired. But what, why was I so tired? Oh, it's because I didn't sleep yesterday. But why didn't I sleep yesterday? Oh, it's because I was late on my uh, work. So I try to break it down analytically and see where I fucked up what what where I made the decision not to do it and what caused that decision so I cannot do it so I cannot do it again um also I'd like to add you know if you read uh Sigmund Freud's civilization and and its discontents um what you will find is there are certain constraints that our civilization has which is good for, let's say, with civilization, but it's not good for individuals. Like, for example, you know, uh, punishment. Without punishment, civilization could not really exist because, you know, if you commit to uh, murder or to crime, then obviously you have to be punished, punished. Uh, because otherwise there will be a chaos in civilization. You know, there's a saying that uh, the government is not, to, is not here to, to create heaven, but it's here so that there wouldn't be hell. Uh, so that's kind of how I would view 
add punishments for you personally. Uh, you know, for myself, I personally, I don't use punishments. I used to use them. It does take a lot of willpower to use them. So can I can rather... I, uh, can I uh, make that point sharp, sharper? Yeah. There is punishment, but the punishment is how bad I feel because I didn't do it. So the punishment is <laughs> yeah, automatic. I, I don't need to punish myself because I feel like shit. Uh, so then I take that negative feeling and I use that as motivation to sit down and analytically break down what made the decision not to do it. And if I can trace the, the, the decision where I said, I will not do this today, because it's always you have that slight struggle. You're like, I'll do it. I won't do it. I do it. I won't do it. And you find that point where you said, I won't do it. Or you find that point where you actually started resisting. So maybe you, you procrastinated. So that's why you, you're resisting. So when you find that point, you'll be more aware of it next time. So next time, let's say you'll have the, ex it's always the exact same excuse, by the way. So you'll have the exact same excuse to, to procrastinate and you'll catch yourself. You'll be like, hey, wait, wait, I know where this is going. This has happened before. This will make me not do it. So you just do it that moment because you know that if you listen to your brain, you will not do it. So that is what's called self-mastery. We talked about it earlier. That is the second principle that you cannot succeed without. So... Um, that's why I'm 100% confident that I will be successful at anything I do is because I know my blind spots. I know what makes me uh, procrastinate. I know what makes me decide to give up. And because I know these things, when I want to get something, I know how to strategize so that I avoid them. That's extremely important. So that's why it says, track your progress daily. Always track it. If you're not tracking your progress, how can you know how well you're doing? So let's say that yesterday I missed one, but I missed my habit, you know, the thing I set out to do, the one thing. But if I didn't write it down, then it just, there's no benefit to that negative event. But if I wrote down why I didn't do it, what was the decision, do that for 20 days or 30 days, and you'll start to see common excuses, common decisions, or common um, reasons you procrastinated. So you'll find the reason, and that's the thing. Wherever you go, there you are. So if you tried, say, instead of fitness, you tried making a lot of money, you would fail on the exact same problems, the exact same excuses that made you not work out would make you not get the money. So doing that is not just towards getting the fitness goal, it's towards becoming a successful person who knows he, he will do 100% of what he says he's going to do. And that is the difference between a billionaire and a bum. The small thing. <clears throat> uh, five, even on your worst day. So that is a, a, a test that I like to do before doing the one thing. So like I said, when I choose that one thing, and for me it's like two things now, maybe three, and I can also take bigger loads of, of work when I add new habits. But that's because I'm very much used to doing it. So I have a lot of skill in it. But when you're new, you want to start as minimal as possible. So I always ask myself, will I do this even on my worst day? Because when you choose that one thing you're going to do every single day, you have to swear to yourself, look yourself in the mirror and swear you will, I, I, I say that to myself because that's the way I talk, but don't necessarily say that. But I look in the mirror and say, I will kill myself if I won't do this. It's that important to me. Every single day, I would rather die than miss that, that one day. Because what that one day is, is, is just uh, defeat to me. It's giving up. So when I choose that one thing, I make sure because I am aware of my limits, I make sure that I can do it even on my worst day. So 20 push-ups, like we said, you can do it, you know, your family members of your died, you lost a lot of money, uh, people hated you that day, you know, whatever. 
you can still do 20 push-ups. So if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I will do that even on that day, you know, and I, I just, and you just you remember when you go to sleep, you know, you're already in the bed after your worst day ever. And you remember, oh shit, I didn't do my 20 push-ups. Would you be able to get up and do them? That's the measure I like to use. It's very extreme, but that's because, like I said, I'm a very extreme person. I either do or not do. So maybe for you, it's not on your worst day. It's on a bad day. But for me, I make sure there's a 100% chance I'll do it. I make sure I'll do it. And finally, repetition is king. Make sure the more you set that habit, the more consistently you set it. So let's say instead of once a day, 20, 20 push-ups, three times a day, it will be even faster, the process. So it's super fast as it is. You'll be surprised how fast you'll progress. But when you set it like, like three times a day, and the key here is not like three times in five minutes, but actually a few times during the day, stopping whatever you're doing, you know, changing gears, as they say, just doing the breaks and doing the habit and then continuing. And then the rest after that, after a few hours, again, stopping what you're doing, doing the habit. The more you get used to that action of stopping yourself, you're going to build willpower so much faster and the habit will stick even better. And um, that's fantastic if you want to do that fast, but you don't have to. You can do it just once a day. And that will also be the fastest way you can do it. So again, when you want to get something done, something big like fitness, health, money, that's the way, these six steps. That's, these are the fastest way. This is the fastest way to get to your goals. Even though it looks like it's like just one small step and it's like, how will this get me millions? Or how will I become a bodybuilder with that? This is how you build it. If you build it any other way, it will be slower. That's why I call it the faster system. And you'll find that with, with experience. So if you, you don't trust me or don't believe it yet, feel free to try it out and you'll also know that. So how to implement this knowledge? Um, the Lala Palooza effect, as Matt likes to say, making it all work. Uh, sorry for the part on the right being in Hebrew. I just did it very quickly today, uh, translated it to English. Uh, so I forgot that. So that's, as you remember, that's uh, your, your Lala Palooza at the top and then your vision and then your actions and goals and then the principles of consistency so you need to get as much equated with yourself as possible so most people don't know themselves make sure you know yourself so uh, that in itself will give you a huge boost um, towards success the uh, middle understanding the principles by which success works this means when you understand that everything is exponential then uh you know with the compound effect then and also when you know this uh, the, the principle of entropy which means that if you're not actively improving you're deteriorating this understanding will make you navigate through life in a much more effective way and finally becoming a master habits builder that is what is going to really hit the nail that is what is going to make you extremely successful if you just have one of these skills if you just know how success works know yourself or know how to build habits each on his own is tremendously tremendously um valuable but knowing all three and actively making them work this will this is a guarantee for success you cannot not be successful if you just do these three things so this is pretty much the presentation for today. Um, thank you all for listening. And now we can do questions.